finally, I want to deal with basically what are the problems with inflation. In other words, what, why is it so bad that prices go up? Well, the biggest thing is that you see an arbitrary redistribution of purchasing power. And it's arbitrary because you don't know what the inflation rate is going to be. So let me give you um, a way of thinking about this. For example, let's say that I earn $20 an hour and that my employer agrees to give me a raise of 5%. I'm picking 5% just because the math is easier. Um, he's going to give me a 5% raise for a dollar. And the raise is going to be because of expected price increase. Right, so the year is about to start. The employer thinks that there's going to be 5% inflation. So he says, shiting, there's going to be, I think, 5% inflation. So we're going to raise your wage by exactly 5%, which is $1 an hour. Now, what that would mean is that the intent is that my purchasing power would stay the same. So I'm not supposed to be any richer or poorer in terms of what I can buy. Because again, even though I'm getting a dollar extra an hour, it's basically going to cover the fact that prices are higher. Now, what if in actuality, prices go up by 10%? Meaning that um, now what I'm seeing is a reduction in employee purchasing power. And the employer gets cheaper workers. Because even though he's paying him a dollar extra an hour more, prices actually went up two dollars, the equivalent of two dollars in price. So the real wage, the price, the purchasing power of the wage, has actually fallen. This wasn't intended though; it was arbitrary. You see the same arbitrary nature not only with wages, but you also see it with um, borrowing. So when you borrow money, um, you basically, most of the time, you agree to what the interest rate's going to be. And that interest rate that's agreed to is both the bank's risk of not getting paid back, but it's also reflecting the fact that the bank is getting paid back with money in the future, money that has to be more because of inflation. So if the bank expects... Two percent inflation, then what they need to do is that the rate that they charge needs to be the two percent for inflation and then some sort of risk premium, meaning the risk that you might not pay it back. Let's say that that risk premium is two percent. So 2 plus 2 would mean that you would see a 4% interest rate. But what if what if inflation was 4%? So if it's higher than expected, the bank loses out. Because now the bank is going to have nothing to, to reflect their risk premium. Everything's going to be going right back into inflation. Right? What if it was even higher? What if it was 10%? Right? Then it becomes easier 
for borrowers to pay back loans. And the bank is hurt. Which is why banks actually like making loans where they can adjust the interest rate, what we call adjustable rate mortgages, because they want to be able to adjust the interest rate um, over time. What you see in these two examples is that um, it's important to be able to have predictable inflation and that this helps then with long-term planning. So predictable increases, predictable inflation, leads to better long-term planning.